Frame rates, honestly, not too good. 24 FPS. You can see I'm a little sideways here because I'm about to play Alan Wake 2 on a 4090. This game just came out and apparently it has some of the best graphics and of course it's gonna be really demanding. I wanna see how a 4090 handles it. So let's go in to the game. Let's go look at the graphics settings. We're gonna play this at 4K and this system has a 14900K as well with a PNY 4090. So 3840 by 2160, the render resolution, we're gonna set it at that with DLAA. Um, we're gonna leave frame generation off for now. I wanna see how this game plays like basically native yeah, at the resolution. So if we go down, we're gonna put everything on the highest that we can. So we're gonna put ultra or high for every single setting. Of course, ray tracing is gonna be on, on high. Um, DLSS ray reconstruction. We're gonna leave that on and direct lighting. So we loaded up the game. On the top left, I have MSI Afterburner running. You can see it's gonna tell us the GPU temperature around 63C right now, um, going at 100%, um, pulling 425 watts. This is a PNY 4090. Uh, and then we could look at the memory um, right underneath that. That's gonna be the allocation. Um, 15,150, so like, it's literally allocating 15 gigabytes of VRAM. And then we could look at the actual usage is around 13 gigabytes of VRAM. That means that anything really with a limit of 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K, you're not gonna be able to do this with the same results, obviously as a 4090. That means 4070 Ti, you're gonna have problems. Um, so far, I think with a 4080 at 4K, you should be able to get away with it, but this shows you how some games are just gonna be very, very VRAM hungry at 4K. And we look down the CPU, it's kind of pegged at uh, 5677 megahertz. This is a 14900K, so that way we minimize CPU bottlenecks uh, as much as possible, even though at 4K, typically you don't really, it's more GPU heavy. If this was 1080p, the CPU is a lot more important, but I wouldn't dismiss it because at 4K, a lot of games have been having some CPU bottlenecks already with a 4090. So that's an entirely new category, even though it's gonna be less, of course, in other resolutions. As you can see, we're walking around. Frame rates, honestly, not too good. 24 FPS. This is without the LSS uh, frame generation on, of course. This is native, maxed out with ray tracing. You can see not only is it really eating up that VRAM, I mean, the 4090 does have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, so we're not even close to any type of uh, saturation of that. But you can see it's very, you know, I mean, you can play it, but it's not really, uh, it's smooth at least. You can see by the frame time, you see the little line underneath the FPS. So the FPS on the left, that's our active FPS. In the middle is the average. And then the one on the right is gonna be the 1% low. So they're all hovering around that 24 FPS or so. So as you can see, native at 4K maxed out, even a 4090 is, you could say struggling, you know? You can play it. I mean, it, it isn't like choppy, it's smooth. If you look at the frame time, the little graph underneath, but definitely not something that you would really wanna do. But I think let's play a little while longer on native. You know, it's not gonna change much. Sometimes you get a little more FPS, a little less, if there's more stuff kind of happening. Let's just walk around here. But let's now go into where this game is probably more designed for. Because obviously if the developers are playing this in their you know, test center and they have the most powerful GPU known to man, which is a 4090, and they're getting 24 FPS at 4K, a resolution that a lot of people play at now, a lot of people have 4K TVs, I'm playing this on an LG um, C2 you know, TV basically, that means that they know that this game is too demanding and they're gonna have to plan to do DLSS. That's why Nvidia pushed DLSS 3 so hard with this game because they know it's part of the experience and they wanna see how good the technology is. We've seen with Cyberpunk 2077 that that particular implementation is with ray reconstruction and everything else that's also available in this game. So now we're in the settings and we're gonna leave it at 4K all we're gonna do is turn on frame generation. Let's see what it does to the game. We're gonna leave it, leave it native. We're gonna leave it at 3840 by 2160 DLAA. You can see we have other options here. We can go to quality. 
We can go to balanced, performance, or ultra performance, and you can see how it affects the actual resolution right underneath it. DLAA is gonna be the best quality one. It's gonna keep it at its native resolution. So all we did was turn on DLSS frame generation. Let's see what happens. We're gonna go from 24 to what? Let's reset the little counter. Let's walk around in the same area that we were just walking, okay? So as you can see, we went from 24 to around maybe, what, 47? Let's walk around a little more. Let's keep walking around. Still under 60 FPS, which is, you know, pretty funny that at 4K we can't run uh, natively 4K 60, but we do have absolutely every single option maxed out, including ray tracing. And this is the latest technology, literally. So, you know, we're getting like 45, 46. The average is about 46 FPS. It's much better than 25. Um, and this is kind of like, at least this scene is not really a very fast paced one. You don't need a high frame rate. Um, it's smooth. There aren't any frame time issues, any type of like stutters. So that's really good. But at 44 FPS, what if you get into a scene uh, you know, later on where you have to run from some bad guys or something like that? It may get a little worse because I'm sure then it's going to drop into the 30s with these type of settings. So 44 FPS, not the best at 4K. So let's see. We're going to go back in. Now we're going to do quality. Instead of DLAA, we're going to choose quality, which is going to drop our render resolution down to 2560 by 1440 or 1440p. And we're going to see if we can notice any difference. Playing with frame generation and DLAA, I didn't really see any drawbacks. The game still looked the same to me as native resolution, really. It's hard to tell, you know, the, the interpolated frames if they have any effect or not. It's going to be more on latency, but in a game like this, especially in these scenes when you're just walking around, you're never really going to notice that. So let's see what happens. The display resolution, as you can see, is 4K, but then the render resolution is going to be half that. We're going to be at 1440p with frame generation, and I have a feeling this one is going to jump up our frames a nice amount. Visually, before we even look at the frames per second, the game feels better. It feels smoother. Like, you can definitely notice a nice difference. And I would notice this in Cyberpunk as well, when I would try it natively and then jump into uh, some type of DLSS 3. It makes a huge difference to the smoothness of the game. So we can see the frame, rate, frame rates now is up to about 75, 76 average. So that basically triples it. If we went from 25 to around 75, 76, triple the frame rate um, average. Our 1% our low around 61, which is still pretty good. The game certainly does feel considerably smoother. Like you can see when you move around and look around, it just feels like a little bit more fluid. Um, I'm not really seeing any drawbacks with any type of resolution issue or any artifacts or anything like that, at least looking around. So DLSS 3 with ray reconstruction definitely is a must for this game because if a 4090 can't natively do 4K um, at a decent resolution, that's a bit of a problem. Imagine any other GPU. You strap on with these settings, oh boy, you're going to be in for a, for a mess. Uh, maybe a 4080 might be able to get, um, you know, something that's not completely a stuttery mess, but I think anything underneath a 4080 is literally going to have a problem. I'd like to, I'm going to test the 7900 XTS in, the, in, this, in this game, the AMD with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, and see how that does at 4K. Obviously, they don't have the LSS3 or the same ray tracing chops as NVIDIA, so I'm expecting, you know, not great results either, but... I'm, but I'd be curious how it would compare to something that's not a 4090, maybe a 4070 Ti, if it would beat that. Maybe get close to a 4080. Even with ray tracing, I kind of doubt it. I think the 4080 may still be superior. So, as we can see here, walking around, don't really see any issues, and the frame rate is much, much higher. Obviously, if we play around... Now, given the nature of this game, I would just run it at quality. I think you don't really need more than 75 FPS, at least not in these scenes. If we go to other options, let's see balanced. Let's see what happens when we run it on balanced. We go up to maybe like 86, so we get maybe a nice 10 FPS bump. 
Um, the resolution, if you look close, I guess you can tell that it's not nearly as sharp as it was before. Like 1440p still looked pretty sharp. Obviously 4K was the sharpest. You can tell it's a little less sharp, but would it really make a difference in the playability of the game? Hmm, I'm not too sure. Still feels pretty smooth, but the difference from going from native to 1440p is much greater than from going from quality to balanced, for example. Let's just try ultra performance. This is 1280 by 720. I'm just curious how it's going to look like and perform. Okay, so now we're basically maxing out. This monitor, the 4K monitor, has 120 hertz uh, refresh rate, so we're basically maxing out the monitor um, or the TV. It's an LG C2. Uh, obviously, it doesn't look bad. It still looks, you know, sharp enough. I'm sure if you really, really pixel peep, you're going to see the difference, obviously. But it doesn't look uh, fuzzy or terrible. So DLSS certainly doing a pretty decent job. And you're getting, you know, 118 average FPS. So that's a massive difference from the 25 uh, FPS that you were getting natively. That's almost a, a 100 FPS difference which is pretty crazy. And it still looks like the same game. It's not like you're playing on low and everything looks like blocks. Let's go back to 4K and just see the difference again. Let's go back to the regular um, DLAA, the native resolution. Let's turn off frame generation. And let's see what happens here. Immediately, the choppiness is like, oh my goodness, look at that. 23, 24, 25 FPS. Like, that's the biggest thing that you noticed. And it, it's sharp. It's 4K. I don't really notice a huge difference visually. Uh, DLSS was doing a pretty good job at sharpening it, honestly. So the biggest difference is in that smoothness. This is not really that great. And then, obviously, turn on frame generation. Makes it better. But I think you really do have to do quality on here. Let's see how frame generation was with DLAA native. I mean, it's, it's better, but you still have some of those smoothness issues because you're still only getting in the 40s for the FPS. So I would definitely bump this up. The ideal settings, if you want to play this at 4K, maxed out, in my opinion, is going to be either, you know, obviously DLSS frame generation with quality. I think quality is going to be probably your, your best bet because then you're going to be getting over 60 FPS. Um, and then if you do need some more FPS in certain scenes, I would just drop it to balanced. I think most of these uh, settings for DLSS 3 actually look pretty decent. But a game like this that has a not, lot of nice visual niceties, I think a lot of people are going to be playing it at the quality setting if you're playing at 4K. Obviously, if you're playing at 1440p, then I think you can do native. So if you drop down your resolution, or if you have a monitor that's 1440p instead, uh, obviously you'll be more than fine with a 4090. I think you're going to be able to get some pretty good performance, especially with frame generation. But at 4K, if you want to get that 60 plus FPS, you're going to have to do DLSS 3, frame generation, and quality at the very minimum. Because native resolution doesn't get you nice performance. See, look at this. I'm playing on quality right now with frame generation. And the biggest difference that you notice is the smoothness. It's not sharpness or even the details. The smoothness of moving around and not being choppy, that's the biggest differentiator, in my opinion, from native to DLSS. That's what makes DLSS uh, really good in this game. Like it, it really, It's essential. Now... You could say the developers could have made the game perform better natively, but then what's that going to do? I think the game probably, you know, it's hard to say how well optimized it is, but then they would have to have done, maybe the graphics wouldn't have been as intense. And there's going to be some drawback there. I don't think the resol you know, the, the FPS is low in this game because it's not optimized. I think it's just very demanding. And we're going to need maybe a 5090 at least if we want to play this near 60 FPS natively, I think. That's the only other, you know, possible option that I see. But overall, very cool game. And you better have a good GPU for this game or else you're going to have to drop a lot of these settings. Obviously, you can drop ray tracing and drop settings to, you know, high or medium. And that's going to get you better frame rates as well. But if you have a 4090 with a 14900K, you definitely want to max everything out, right? I mean, that's literally the best you can do today. So you want to make sure to max everything out. And this is the way to do it. The LSS3 with quality. That's what's going to get you in that zone of at least 4K60. 
4K 20, you're gonna have to drop it down to ultra performance, which is still okay, but I'd rather be at 4K 60 and have a little bit sharper visuals. All right guys, so remember to subscribe, let me know what you think of these type of videos, and I'll see you guys on the next video.